Hi everyone, welcome to the weekly stock market update. Okay, now I know there's trouble in the Middle East yet again. Uh, and we need to have the kind of portfolio over 12 months which is going to be resilient to short-term noise. Uh, and we're comfortable with the company so much that we don't lose any sleep over moves as we've just got, um, seen over the weekend uh, in terms of political moves, and then we'll see what happens on Monday. Okay, so it's a useful reminder that if you're going to lose sleep over those unexpected events, then it's probably the wrong portfolio you've got. Uh, let's just start off with valuations. Microsoft, you're paying $31 for every $1 in future profits. So that's expensive. But as I reiterate every week, valuation is not the only thing which leads to stocks moving up, but can be a very good excuse for taking profits. So we're going to look at not just value, we're going to look at growth income as well, because growing companies can justify higher valuations and their stock prices can move up. Of course, I'm mindful that when we get companies in any of these undervalued sectors, uh, which also happen to be growing and producing dividend yields, then we should be considering those in particular just because, of course, they're ticking yet another box. But um, the reason I have a lot of these companies in the red is because the valuation being high was outweighed by growth, dividend deals, momentum, Sortino, Alpha. Okay, so just a reminder. By the way, highlight of the week, before I get into the stock of the week, uh, for me was receiving this. Now, uh, really pleased with it, and it's one of many I've had. I don't have any specific questions to ask, so I won't waste your time with the schedule call, but wanted to let you know I'm still here and watching and learning, and most importantly, thank you for helping change mine and my family's lives. Uh, I got that email from a person who started with 100K on the Great Investments Program in 2021. He added a bit to his portfolio and today has 397,000. Equally importantly, if not more importantly, in that time he had two kids in the past three years. So I'm especially overjoyed that it's helped change his family's life in those three years because, of course, he's got kids. Uh, I'm going to give you an update very soon on the recordings I did with the Financial Times and some really good stuff coming up, uh, hopefully this week actually. Now in this stock market update we're going to talk about the S&P 500, the Nasdaq, Microsoft, Apple, amongst a bunch of other stocks, Nvidia, Meta, Alphabet and Amazon, so do watch to the end. And what we're going to be looking for in particular are companies which are undervalued and growing with dividend deals. We want to be doing our due diligence properly, our due diligence properly. That means ticking all those boxes. Crokey, which comes from Goldman Sachs Wealth Management, of course. Momentum, Sortino and Alpha. And I cheat with Alpha when picking stocks. Alpha is when the stock market goes up, the stock goes up more. When the stock market falls, the stock market doesn't fall as far. So I cheat by just picking high alpha stocks. And then I attribute that alpha to myself. Very simple. The past isn't a guarantee of the future, but it's a pretty good guide. So you'll notice in that I didn't mention profit and loss accounts, news, narratives, earnings reports, uh, balance sheets, cash flow statements, because in that part of it, none of those are relevant. Okay. Similarly with Sortina coming from the hedge fund industry, as I do, that's an important ratio for us. Uh, but those all are all the bits I'm going to include. Now, a piece of data which has caught my eye, and I'm repeating it again uh, over here, is this. The S&P returns after five straight up months and a 20% gain, which is where we are now. On average, over the subsequent 12 months, you're up about 14%. That gives us a good tailwind so that our stocks should be doing... Well, if you're up 14%, we should be looking at at least 25 to 40% for our portfolios, depending on how widespread that tailwind is and assuming a repetition. Now, the past doesn't guarantee the future, but it's a pretty good guide. Uh, should we buy the dip? Some concerns about the dip. Here's some data that I got from Goldman Sachs. Uh, past S&P 500 corrections have typically been buying opportunities. This is as of January 27, 2022. Median S&P returned since 1950 after buying S&P 500 10% off its highs. And it was up, there you go, 15%. Whereas if you didn't buy off its highs, uh, when it was 10% off its highs, or you didn't buy the dip, you only made 10%. And again, a 15% return is a pretty good tailwind to give us for our portfolio if we're looking at undervalued stocks which are growing 
uh, with dividend deals to give us at least 25 to 40 percent uh, when we're cherry picking. Uh, one other thing I wanted to draw to your attention in this stock market update this week is this. This is from a typical fund which uh, a client of mine had sent me several uh, months ago. Just watch out how much you're paying your fund manager, okay? Just be very careful. They'll, they'll say invest £10,000, hold for five years. They'll want you to hold for five years. They're going to charge you £1,000 on that. Okay, that's 10% of your money just gone in fees over five years, which is why so many people only average about 4% uh, on their funds. And I don't like fund managers. Market corrections since World War II were not at corrections, but obviously there's talk about it, there's concerns. 26 corrections have averaged a decline of 13.7% over four months and have taken four months to recover sort of explains why, and this is also from Goldman Sachs, explains why I'm a little bit relaxed about any downward moves in the market. So how's the past week been? Well, we've had a lot of green, of course, despite Middle East concerns and higher oil prices anticipated over there, but it's actually been a mixed bag. So we really need to drill down into individual stocks uh, to get better understanding. Uh, ETFs, energy doing rather well, so is gold and commodities. I will do a broadcast on those uh, relatively soon. Crypto has taken a bit of a battering at the moment. That might change, of course. This is only looking at exchange traded funds over the past month. The country specific ones uh, from Vietnam to China to Europe, nothing gone up uh, in the past month. So as I said, we'll go into some of these in due course and, and take a deeper dive. I have put some of these up on YouTube and on TikTok uh, and looking at um, some of those. Uh, by the way, came across this from Money Week. I wanted to share that with you. Absolute dog funds. 1st of March 2024. There's Bailey Gifford. There's AXA, Aegon, LNG, and so on. Three-year underperformance, anywhere between minus 70% to minus 49%. And it didn't matter whether it was Japan, Europe, UK, North America, uh, global, everything. Just pretty pathetic and poor. Don't blame me. Don't shoot the messenger about these dogs. Don't shoot the dog. Uh, but it was uh, Money Week who did that research. Year to date, where are we on things? The S&P is up nearly 9%, NASDAQ up 8 There obviously is concern that at some point we're going to get some profit taking, surely. Unusually, the UK market is higher than the Dow 30, the 30 stocks that make up the Dow. That won't last, it never does. Statistically, it's highly improbable the UK for any prolonged period of time will outperform the Dow 30. Uh, the sectors, if we're interested, before we look at and drill down at the individual stocks, uh, energy really soaring ahead, up 17%. The only problem is that a lot of those, uh, whilst they're undervalued and we've got momentum, we really want to check growth. So don't just blindly buy into those. Communications is next, industrials uh, uh, and financials and materials. And then, of course, you've got tech down there. Tech not being the driver of the rally, contrary to what people think. Now, I don't try and gamble on which is the winning sector, so I'm not really bothered about which ones are winning here. I look at the individual stocks in my portfolio uh, because companies are factories for making money and I want them to tick the value, growth, income, cash flow boxes before getting in. Uh, the factors which have been driving stock market moves this year, growth has been critical and that's really been the first one. But as you know, how did I know those were the ones to have? Well, I didn't. I picked stocks which were value and value growth and value growth momentum. So I necessarily picked growth because it ticked the value growth income momentum boxes. And that was the way to do it. So you got the best of the best and threw the bathwater out with, um, with all the other factors which weren't going to perform. That's what due diligence is. Over the past year, how have we done? Uh, this is how the markets have done over the past year. The Nasdaq's up 40%, S&P 26, the Dow up 14, the UK lagging well behind. Look at the correlation between all of these, including the UK. Okay, There's no stocks in the UK, which are also in the Nasdaq, of course, yet the correlation is very significant. Uh, they all move in tandem, so so much for diversification. Uh, what I'll do in part two of this is start off with my analysis of the S&P 500 and the directions I think it's going to go. So stay tuned for part two on YouTube and TikTok. You'll find it on both.